Welcome everyone to the Division E Finals between Moss City and Yamajo. Yamajo Station, as we've been calling them all season long and as we will continue to call them on the broadcast. I'm joined by my uh, podcast co-host, Brad Bodkin, but uh, an unfamiliar face. Still not Steph Fens, by the way, so he may be dead. <laughs> but uh, I'm joined by, uh, of course, GM Calatheris, a well-known name, well-known face uh, in FPF for, for a long time. Thank you, that's very much appreciated. Hall of Fame media, uh, sorry, uh, media Hall of Famer. Right? Media yeah. contributor, I guess. It's absolutely. Because absolutely. it's definitely not for my playability. <laughs> no, but, but still a couple championships under your name, and uh, we brought you here for, for some of your expertise in the area, because you have more co championships than me and... Uh, and, and Brent combined That's or, or multiplied. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and before we get started into this game, guys, uh, we sat down with Alvi Mazel of Yamajo Station. We talked about the, the origins of the team, the team name, the development uh, of their defense, as well as uh, their plans on celebrating uh, an upcoming championship final this evening. No, it's the first time I heard it. It's the first time I heard the name Yamajo. I never yeah. even asked him where the name came from. I don't even know where it comes from. Uh, defensively, we definitely played our best football. We had two interceptions last game, two games ago we had three, and two games ago we had three, and another game we had six. So we definitely played our best defense, uh, especially uh, GHB. They scored uh, 19 points against us last week. The week before they scored 53. Right? So yeah. I think we definitely peaked in much more defense. And I think it's a question of, you know, we were, besides, outside of me, Anton Sakis, and Terrence Dobson, everybody else on the team was their first FPF season. I mean, hey, hey, if there was no budget, I'd fly out to Vegas. The whole team would <laughs> Vegas, so it would be a crazy weekend there. You know what, we're definitely going to celebrate. It sucks the games in Broussard, it's not the craziest parts, but we definitely will go out that, that, that night, maybe plan a dinner, and then go to Camp Fire or something like that. And guys, we are back live at the Bell Sports Complex. We have the coin toss taking place right now between two captains, Anton Sackage, Priyama Joe, and Benoit Vanier from my city. So guys, Obviously, 30 teams sign up at the beginning of the season. Yeah. Two teams are left now. Yep. This is the, uh, the, the last hurrah, if you will. Championship Sunday doesn't get any bigger than this. Your quick pregame thoughts. What do you see from Moss City if they want to get the win? What do they need to do? <laughs> Look, they have one of the best quarterbacks in Andrew Perry. Um, you pointed out earlier in the season, Brent, I was a little slow on the uptick. Uh, when I had the chance to watch them play, I was really impressed by the, the quick release. Uh, and they just have to stay patient and continue marching against the tough Yamajo defense. And for you, Jim, what do you think uh, Yamajo needs to do to come out of here with the W? So definitely the opposite of that. I think that Terrence Dobson is is very smart with his play calling. I think he just needs to slow down the pace of the game a little bit, have Andrew Farrier in the Moss City offense sitting and waiting so that upon coming onto the field, um, they, they're they a little bit more pressed for time. They may make mistakes, rush it a little bit, try and air out the ball a little bit more than necessary. And nothing's more uh, more frustrating for a quarterback than to be sitting on the bench watching the other team's offense. Mm -hmm. Let's begin the quarterbacks. We have number 10, Andrew Ferry, the rookie, leading my city. They had the choice now with the coin toss, finishing with a better record. They chose to start with the ball on offense. And here we go with the first play of the game. Ferry with the ball, tosses over to Provence. Provence picks up about five yards on that first play. He's tackled by uh, Ter uh, pardon me, David, uh, DVD Joseph. Yeah, and Terrence stops in there too. Um, Jim, did you see that right up right before the snap? He looked right, saw Terrence Dobson was off the line, threw the hook immediately. Mm -hmm. That's the, honestly for a rookie quarterback. That's that's a savvy veteran move, and we'll see if he's able to exploit that later on. Nice pass by Ferry to the outside. I believe it'll be enough for a first down. I believe from here that would be. Just can't see his number from this vantage point. By the way, first down from Moss City, sent in by head referee Leo Gervais, and that was number five, Victor Rio Fa Rio Fatty Rio Ratty, part of me on a reception. Yeah, Victor Riferati, very good at that slot, very quick, and gets into a, when he gets the ball in his hand, makes a play. Curry over the middle, and it's picked up. Oh, drop by Jack Antaki. You see the frustration on, Ta on Antaki's face, punching the turf. Very, very interesting play there, where we saw two posts cutting underneath each other, and both Yamajo safeties also trailing in that. Well, I was going to mention the first play, they ran a flood concept, uh, but it did look like the snapper was too close to the out, and, and then and the window was tighter than it had to be. This is something I noticed uh, in the first couple of plays, the spacing not quite there yet for uh, Moss City in their offense. Jack Antaki, one of the premier players on Yamajo, and I think someone that, whose name we're going to be hearing a lot in the years to come in FPF. Very good. Wide open down the middle. And Ben Dettilli for the touchdown. So blown coverage right there by the Yamajo defense, giving Moss City the early 6-0 lead. It just, it's a... Uh, 
fly post on one side. They, they sat on the fly, gave up the post. Post being a much easier pass to complete right in front of the quarterback, Benjamin Tilly, uh, an absolute monster with uh, the speed that he has. We saw him get open. It looks like Farrier likes that matchup in the in the middle area, and it's called back-to-back -back post. So I, I think that at this point, with the coverage that Yamajou are playing, that's what he seems to be most comfortable exploiting right now. So Masidi now going for the one-point conversion. Ferrier tosses it to the side, tries to go back one more time to Dettili, but Dettili cannot make the catch. So again, it's a 6 nothing lead for Moss City. Now, both of you guys had a chance earlier this season to, to play uh, mm -hmm. Yamajou in the playoffs. I'll start with you, P. You guys played them, your team, of course, one speed power. You played those guys, I believe it was in week... Week four, four. Really, yeah, yeah. week four, yeah, exactly. But they beat you guys 39-19. to 19. What are some of the things that you saw from the Yamajo defense. Size. Uh, Damon Thomas Anderson takes away a lot in the middle of the field. Uh, less of a deal for uh, Andrew Ferrier than for me. Just uh, curious right now if we're going to see a 40 bomb on the first play coming from Terrence Dobson. He usually to throws it wide, wide sidelines. To DVD Joseph on the first play. Uh, direct the DVD release? <laughs> <laughs> it may be the case. Hey, there it is. There Here it, it comes. Right to no. He ran inside for no apparent reason. Yeah, th that ball was definitely underthrown, mm -hmm. but even even if it wasn't, uh, DVD seemed to be no, almost running like a, that a was skinny Damon post. Thomas Anderson. Oh, Damon Thomas Anderson running almost a skinny post rather than just a, a fly up the sideline. Because if he box, because even even though it's behind him, if he boxes guy out, he's so big that it's still a playable ball for Damon Thom Thomas Anderson. And now, Jim, I going to ask you. Obviously, you, you played them last Sunday in the quarterfinals. Your team, Homo Sapiens, going down to Yamajo, and you mentioned in the first play of the game against you guys. They went deep for a forty-yard TD to DVD Joseph. Uh, in your opinion, the 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 Yamajo offense, we see Dobson with a pass right here. Oh, He's picked, picked off. off. Picked off. Benoit Vanier throw. read that drag perfectly. Jack did almost like either a five in or a stutter step slant. And Terrence looked to follow him the whole way and it just went right into the hands of Vanier who read that route perfectly. Vanier, whose face does not appear on our website, will be, his face will be etched into the memory of Terrence <laughs> Dobson because he did not see him coming across from the backside. Terrence just reading uh, one side of the field and he paid the price. And that's what happens with a, uh, an, an inexperienced quarterback. And you see that in the replay. So Vanier, the all-star who led his team with seven interceptions this season, making his first INT this postseason. Moss City right now, trips formation looks like. Um, just, just outside the red zone. They wouldn't want to match up on the outside. Ferrier tried to check it down. He throws off of his back foot due to the pressure from Damon Thomas Anderson. So incomplete on first down. Bruno Provence looked to, to run as that solo ISO receiver on the right side. He ran a hook. Um, it looks like the read from Ferrier was there, but just the coverage was a little bit too much for him to really trust that hook. And this is where Yamajo is so much better on defense just because of their size. They take away uh, the back of the end zone just, just for the fear that you have of throwing over them where they can make a play. So we see the season, the Yamajo, in the regular season, pardon me, the Yamajo defense gave up 23 points a game. They stepped up their game, however, in the postseason, allowing only 19 points in the three uh, postseason games. So we see they can make a big stop right here on second down. Ferry drops back, gets a pass once again. Gets it upfield to number 17. That was Antoine Hamasaki Belanger for a small gain. And a uh, gr great catch by Hamasaki Belanger, but that's that's what Moss City wants to do. They want to run a lot of rub routes in the red zone. Uh, Yamajo Station, very, very disciplined as a defense. So I, I, I'll, I'd like to see if they can find a way to break a guy open in those tight routes or if Andrew Ferry is going to be forced to go to the back of the end zone. So we've got back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back trips formation for Moss City in this. So Farrier sees something for sure that he likes. Double there move there by Farrier. Uh, DVD Joseph was just uh, a little bit too overcommitting on that in and gave up the, the double move. If I'm not mistaken, he ran an in on the previous play, so it looked as if as if uh, DVD Joseph was just sitting on that end, and he ran a smash out to the cone and was by himself. Right there by the third year player, number seven, Bruno Pavanche. That's his fifth touchdown of the postseason. Gives this team right now it's 12 nothing lead for Moss City, looking to add on to it. This time in base formation. Get to the right. And it's dropped past by Dettili. Like so a little, um, some few inaccuracies on those extra point converts. But right now, um, Moss City are deadly efficient. We have um, we have a convert on second down and two touchdowns on second down as well. Moss City have not seen a third down or a fourth down thus far, which is very interesting. Well, one touchdown was a blown coverage. The other one, again, an ISO overcommitted. It's a tough spot for the corner to be in. So uh, we'll have to see how that progresses for the rest of the game. Dobson gets the ball. 
the middle. The Skripnik, good catch by Skripnik on the ball behind him. <laughs> Skripnik is the sniper who loved him. Um, Valentin Skripnik as well, one of the, the few players on this team who joined who wasn't part of that um, game changers or who was championship, uh, championship pedigree of his own season. Uh, winter uh, 2017 with Greendale Human Beings, exactly. Where he had a huge game as well. Clearly, it was a personal issue. They didn't get along. Someone may have slept with someone else's mother. Oh, Anton Sack is wide open to Joseph. Tries to make a move. He's tackled by Patty. Nobody was covered on the right side of the, the Moss City defense. Yeah, Anton Sackis ran like a post corner just behind, and I don't think that the DB would have been able to catch that in time. I don't know if Terrence Dobson didn't trust himself to uh, throw it, just didn't see it. It didn't even look like he was looking there, to be honest, Jim. It looked like he was just staring at it. And uh, he took it because it was wide open. It may have been later in his progression. Second and short here. Dobson gets a snap, looks over the middle. Tosses it to his left and caught for a touchdown by Aton Sackage. So Dobson making up for that play a moment ago where he missed a wide open Sackage. Hitting him now on goal line to get a team on the board. We'll see it on the replay here. That was a very interesting route there. That looked almost like a post out. Um, and just Anton, former quarterback, or championship quarterback as well, knows how to, to run routes cleanly to get between defenders and sort of sell. Yeah, it was like a deeper like smash out, so he had to sort of slant it and then run it out. Uh, well, well run up by Anton Sackis. Dobson looks to his right, delivers over the middle. Oh, wow. Nice catch by Skripnik, and they're going to give him the conversion. Jack Antaki holding the back of his head after falling on, on that convert as well. I'd like to see a replay of what happened on the left side of the field. So Skripnik essentially was tackled right there by number four. Oh, so he so said, hold on to the ball, making a clutch catch for his 12 to 7 game. We did not see it on that replay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Our camera hop is. Uh, that being said, that camera, that catch by Valentin Skripnik is fantastic. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. He uh, he rolled over, used his body to protect it, and uh, way to hold on to the ball. Great concentration. 12 7 game here for Moss City, who now have the ball. The Fury back once again with the ball. He's going deep. Tries to hit Pravanche. Pravanche just misses the pass. It was open. It, it was, was open. definitely open. That ball hung just a little bit too long, yeah. and because of that, it, it tended to drift towards the outside. But that, it's still that catchable. matchup was definitely there, interestingly enough. It's still a catchable ball. I think if you attacked it instead of trying to make a basket catch, he probably has that for a touchdown. Right there, Pravanche bringing his man in coverage. It's number 11, DVD Joseph. That'd be an interesting matchup for the rest of this game. See so Joseph once again lining up against Moss City. Yeah. once again employed by Moss City. Ricky Dudonay in the middle, uh, seemingly covering a little bit too far off, leaving that slant in right there. It looks like uh, Farrier is exploiting this, this trip's coverage because Yamajo, as you guys mentioned, seemed to be adjusting a little bit late to him. That's something too, because they run a lot of uh, rub concepts from the trips, uh, it makes it a little bit tight and at times you can interfere with the, with the rusher. Uh, but Farrier, to his credit, often doesn't look to the ISO as, as a major part of his read, but twice pre-snap, saw something he liked, attacked it right away. Uh, rusher uh, Damon Thomas Anderson coming off of uh, the win with Greendale Human Beings where he had six sacks in a very, very uh, instrumental game. Yeah. It helps with these like nice yeah. Farrier definitely doesn't have the, that ability to throw over because of his size. Yeah. Bruno Provence has one of the quickest cuts. He's, he's, he's so fast, but it's not even just the, the speed. You saw it just on the simple hook there, uh, able to get separation on, on his route running. Every single time. Trips right here. We see uh, third and third and one. We see how Andrew Perry oh, yeah. on his first third down of the game thus far. That's crazy. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
And about ten and a half minutes into the first half, and that's the first so, uh, I'm on the field, like I can grow, uh, no, the box, and I feel like it's great at sort of making uh, the image. Uh, I keep my one story, and I sit for another week. I'm going to go see her again on uh, um, five, uh, five touchdowns, four touchdowns, and four touchdowns. Uh, it's like it's not your rotator cuff, which is good. But she's like, do this, and then you come see me in a week and see how it is. I might have to go to the sports studio. He really does manage the game. Pitch anyway, open once again, and he chopped a ton of cash. No, no, no. It's, it's a strain of some kind. It might be like um, just your bike is just kind of It hit him in the hands, but I think that even if he had he caught it cleanly, he would have still been out of bounds at the back of the end zone. I think he was led just a little bit too much because he did have separation on that on his defender. Now second down coming up. For Moss City on this drive. All of Moss City's in position thus far. Very good. Yeah, I know that, but it's more than that. No, we were on the Asian side of that. Moss City. Yeah, you have to get the ball. Goes over the middle. Kibache. And he makes the catch. Oh, that was nice. Oh, nice. One foot down, the other one just landed out of bounds. So it's a good coverage right there by number 22, Jack Antaki. Kind of drove the route by Provence out of bounds. Well, it was also late. He yeah, he threw in the second window. He had it open initially. I, and I, what I've noticed, is, I middle. think this is what, uh, what Andrew Ferrier sees as well. Terrence Dobson, uh, not Terrence Dobson, um, David Joseph, Joseph, sorry, starts. He seems to be starting in a back pedal immediately, regardless of the route. So it's allowing a lot of the in cuts to get to get separation. What you tried to him up and get burned. So so maybe a little bit of mind games going on between Andrew Ferrier and DVD Joseph. Oh, looks like we have a delay of game I'm penalty by Moss Sen by Moss City. So a delay again called by head referee Bruno Ger Leo Gervais, pardon me. So looks like we're gonna be going back five repeating that down there. Yeah, definitely a loss of five for Moss City. So, so it looks like it's so gonna be third, third yeah, third and long here. Uh, very interesting to see if Fario's going to cut it in half or try and hit oh, it yeah. right away from the first I just like this. Why? I don't know. I'm hungry. He's like, why? He's supposed to be able to get back in the middle once again. Attack here for the ball. Out of bounds again? Out of bounds again? What's kind of strange is with a post wheel run on the right hand side and the left hand side, yeah, they didn't run really to the, off, to the other sideline. So they, they just said it was a lot, there was too much coverage in the middle of the field to attempt to oh, it would have been nice I, I think that this is sort of a play that highlights that Moss City, this is their first season, they are wow. in the finals as well because um, third and long, not even looking to sort of cut up the distance to get the first down, he was thinking, pull the trigger, uh, look to the end zone, and it looks like that, that resulted in a punt. Now, that should give them the ball. Legal. Doesn't that give them the ball on the one yard line, or were they not on the other side? It's come on the other side. Like they were, were because of the delay of game penalty. Oh, there we go. Jeez. Yes. Huge mistakes by uh, Masiri. Now with the chance, and this this will give Yamajo Station the chance to tie it. Yamajo on ten yard line. Dobson gets the snap. Looks to his left. Hits Sackett. Sackett tries to make a move, and he does. He's finally brought down at about the 20 yard line. I, I talked about how Anton Sackis runs crisp routes. You see right here on the, re you'll see right here on the replay as well. Um, he knew to slow down, sort of had an awareness as he was catching the ball as to where the, the sidelines were. He was able to pick it up and continue, gain some yards after the completion with that play as well. Yeah, and also you'll see, you'll notice that number 21, Jamie Lavallee, is, is lining up sort of on the inside, although he seems to have adjusted, and that's allowing uh, Terrence Dobson to attack that side of the field. Zach is once again looking for Crossing the routes. Backpedaling now, spinning, and he's brought down the sack right there by Ben Dettilly. So Dettilly, who had a couple, who's had a couple of draws, pardon me, on the offensive side of the ball, coming through defensively with, with his first sack of the game and his fourth sack of the postseason. Um, a couple of injuries had, uh, that um, Terrence Dobson has sustained throughout his FPF career. He, Notably he the torn Achilles yeah. a couple of seasons so ago. So we're used to a very, very mobile um, Terrence Dobson. It's, it's interesting in times like that where he's trying to, to gain time. We've, uh, throughout the playoffs, throughout the season, uh, Terrence Dobson has given up a fair share of sacks, 18 in the regular season, and uh, a fair bit in the playoffs as well in the last three games. That's his experience at quarterback. He's got to learn to just dump the ball when nothing's there. Dobson gets the ball now. 
Going I'll be Mizell in the post. Mizell. Mizell had a chance to make a play on the ball, but a good deflection right there by number four, C. Fascasi, the rookie from Moss City. And Alvi Mazel talked about the, how much better uh, Yamajo got throughout the season. We saw that in the interview. Um, and and to, to their credit, here they are in the finals, a team that we didn't think much about early in the season. It really just got better and better. And we kind of knew it would happen at some point, but it, it's amazing to see it all happen in one season. Ricky Dudene uh, subbed out on offense there. Damon Thomas Anderson coming in at that wide right position to the left of your screen. Uh, Terrence Dobson awaiting the snap here. Dawson looking over the middle once again, way overthrown, out of bounds. Overthrown, and he looked off Damon Thomas Anderson on that, who was open, um, and chose instead to throw to the back of the end zone, hoping for a touchdown, but resulting in an incompletion instead. Now fourth down coming up for Yamaja. Will they decide the punt? So they're mulling over their options right now. So I think they've just been made aware of the fact that they are past the halfway point, so would be able to punt and put them on the one. And Yamajo will punt, so as you mentioned, GM, yeah, the ball will be placed at the one yard line for the Moss City offense. Kind of makes you think, if, if Ter Terrence Thompson doesn't take that sack, are we even considering a punt at that point? You know or I mean? even if, if he throws that completion to, uh, to Damon in the middle of the field. Uh, both teams right now have gone th uh, three and out here, uh, so we've had back-to-back -back turnovers. Ferrier waiting to take the snap on, on their team's one. Very quick outlet pass on the left sideline to Vanier. Vanier picks up, picks up about seven on the play. They're just giving up hooks on the outside. It's, it's available to, uh, to Andrew Ferrier if he wants to throw it on every single play. Th that being said, like w we've been talking about Jack Antaki closing in on those posts, so it looks like that's something that has been given up. Like mm -hmm. it's, it's the lesser of two evils. And at this point, Andrew Ferrier has maybe looked left twice all game thus far. He seems to be feeding the ball right more than he does left. That seems to be where he's a little bit more comfortable throwing. Yeah, definitely. I saw that in the semifinals as well. Uh, he likes that, especially in the red zone. And we've seen that as well in this game. He likes to go to his right-hand side. Quick out to Benjamin Dettilli there. Um, and that looks to be enough for a first down as well. Yeah, pick up a four by the rookie Dettilli. So setting up a new set of downs from Moss City. Lo Three minutes remaining in this first half. I do love that Dettilli's got a r such a big role in this offense because he's known as a rusher. He, he's done such a good job there. Uh, but he absolutely uh, has a great role in this offense as well. Quick pass to Vanier once again on the left sideline. Sack into the tackle. Benoit Vanier with the catch. 245 to five plays remaining in this first half of football. So guys, we see both uh, so far, we've seen a lot of offense scored, a lot of points put up, I should say. But we've seen two defensive stops now, one by Moss City and one by Yamajo. For you, GM, what do you think these teams need to do, at least Moss City, on this drive to get it into the end zone? Um, honestly, just he's going back to that trips formation that was so effective for him earlier on in the game. We're seeing that um, Moss City were a little bit more efficient on first down than they were um, or in, on second and third compared to earlier in the game. Completion there on the right sideline as well. And I mean, this time we see Terrence Dobson crashing a little bit quicker on that on that hook because we just described the hooks being left open on the outside. I wouldn't be surprised to see Andrew Ferry call a hook and go on the outside soon. Uh, DVD Joseph actually cra uh, crashing at the uh, the defender on the on the right. Is that what I said? Terrence Dobson. No, I keep doing that. It's okay. <laughs> the the uh, unfortunately Yamajo guys are not wearing their their uh, typical uniforms, so sorting through the penny numbers. A quick snap right there, pass by Provence, made a nice grab on a ball behind him. Picked up a Jack Antaki with the tackle there. Andrew Farrier very patient on that. He waited for that route to develop, had the, um, had the clear out coming from the receivers on the left, and just that drag was right there and enough for a first down. What amazes me about Andrew Farrier is his ability to reset his feet and deliver a ball around the rusher for throwing from different platforms. Uh, that's something that a lot of FPF quarterbacks uh, take a long time to learn because it's, uh, it's not something that comes easily. He just seems so natural at this position. Offside by Damon, uh, Damon Anderson there, rushing. Was able to... Illegal, pardon me, not illegal touching. I thought that Tilly went, went out of bounds first before making that catch, but he got the catch with one of his feet out of bounds. So he did go out of bounds, but then he stayed out of bounds. <laughs> he continued to be out of bounds. He just walked in bounds. <laughs> Unfortunately, without the catch. Now a few seconds ago, Peter talking about the presence of, of Andrew Ferrier. Able to make any throw from the field. I mean, this team is 9 0 with him in the lineup this season. Mm -hmm, absolutely. This rookie kind of taking oh. this league by storm. Wide open. 
And Ferrier chooses to go with the check down to Pavancha, but he had a receiver wide open. Yeah, in the early back on the that, zone. that crossing route there with the, the sort of corner out and the post underneath was just wide open. Uh, he, I think he hesitated a little bit too much and then thought it was too late to throw that pass. He, he also on the backside of Benoit Vanier hooking at the goal line wide open as well. So some miscommunication on the, the Yamajo Station defense. So the clock is ticking, 14 seconds remaining before five plays in this first half. A 12 to 7 lead from Ma City, who is driving right now. Looks like we are about to hit uh, five plays left right after this, uh, this, this down. Ferry gets the snap once again. Looser's right. And he throws it incomplete due to the pressure from Thomas Anderson. That's one where it, it's pretty clear that we know he's trying to ground the ball, but there is a receiver, yeah. Benjamin Dottilli, running crossing route. Uh, it was no, it was not thrown at him, but it's you know kind of give him a bit of a doubt. He was close bit. enough in the vicinity that the benefit of the doubt could be given. Yeah, but anyone who's ever thrown a football before knows there's no way that was intended for a receiver. <laughs> Th this is interesting because I think this is one of the first times where we, we've ever seen Andrew Farrier this sort of frazzled. Um, Yama Joe's defense seems to be actually adjusting quite effectively mm -hmm. to what was open earlier on in the game. And they're sort of taking that away. What's amazing is even from here, we have a, a much better vantage point, obviously. We keep calling things out and then they, they're adjusting as it's happening in the game. It's, it's pretty awesome to see from a Division E team. So five points oh. have been whistled in and that first pass right there is incomplete. Going once again for Dottilli. Turnover on downs there. Um, in, in early on, which this this may be a play that we'll refer back to as a potential difference maker for either team here. It does appear as though time has expired. So this, we're now in four we're, plays we're in four plays, correct? Oh, four plays, exactly. Four plays remaining in this first half. So a huge stop by the Yamajo defense on back-to-back -back possessions. Bruno Provence, hands on his Must head there, be. just not understanding how, how that wasn't converted for a touchdown earlier on. Dobson gets the snap. Looking over the middle of the strip, Nick. Strip Nick with a move, he picks up a first down, he's still going. He's going down the sideline, he finally steps out of bounds. So great play right there by the second year receiver, Strip Nick. Very smart of, um, of Terrence Dobson to identify that they would be likely playing a, a cover three with the, the wide outs and the, the middle safety all dropping deep. And he just hit center Valentin Skripnik on that, uh, that out to the left. And this gives him the, the chance, because normally if with two plays left, you want to have two plays to take a shot, but now with three plays left, they have an, a chance to cut the field once again and maybe get into the red zone. So the corner is Provence. Oh, bad snap. That's, that's, oh, that's, that's killer. killer. So just as we praised the duo of Terrence Dobson and Valentin Skripnik, so does the duo not uh, unable to, uh, to, to complete the, that, that snap on that play. The so fates giveth and the fates taketh away. Apparently. So two plays remaining now in this first two half. Fates. Once again, a 12 to 7 lead for Moss City. Now, Jim, I want to ask you, how huge would this be right here for Yamajo to get a, get the touchdown and then start with the ball in the second half? Look, honestly, um, you, you need to make the most of every possible opportunity you get, and especially currently being down right now, Yamajo need everything. They oh! Oh, almost with the one-handed <laughs> catch right there. I, I love that Damon Thomas Anderson pushed for seven yards and then looked up for a flag. Yeah. That was awesome. <laughs> We'll see that on the replay as well. Just um, you need to make the most in of his every, every possible opportunity, just throwing you get down the sidelines, especially Thompson. currently being down Not right now. Yamajo down, down every But that's, that's oh, what Damon Thomas Anderson needs to do in that first play where he cut inside. Nice to see that he remembered here. Uh, look, I can use my body. I can get some separation that way, and uh, made a great one-hand attempt, just unable to pull it in. There you guys at home. You guys saw in that replay, Thomas Anderson going up. I believe it, if it was with his left hand. He was able to get his hand on the mm -hmm. ball. He lost possession of it as he tried to bring it into his body, however, as he was falling. Well, that's the hardest thing to do is bring it into your body while your body's hitting the ground, and then you see the momentum of your body going opposite from where the ball's going. So last play of the first half right here. Double rush, and both rushers go offside, uh, incidentally. Ball aired out right Thomas there. Anderson oh. again. And that is tipped away by Pavanche, and that'll do it for the first half, guys. A 12-7 to lead from my City. Peas, I want to start with you. We've seen uh, the amateur offense. It has ended the, the half with a chance to, to, to jump out, to, to grab a lead in this game. What did they have to do to kind of wake up offensively right now? 27 uh, points. They, they need the, the snap to be clean on that play because having three plays left and having two plays left completely changes the psychology uh, and, and, and what, how you manage the game from a quarterback's perspective. And, and, and he simply did not. That's a simple thing. Get the snap to the quarterback. Um, and then what they, go, what they need to do is, once again, just... Terrence Dobson needs to see what's open. He's done that. 
but he's he's not had a drive other than the touchdown drive that's been a complete drive where he's just able to march down, get into the end zone, or take a deep shot and, and complete it. Terrence Dobson has has twice um, turned over the ball on third downs. They have not completed a single third down thus far. I think that right now um, Anton Sakis is in discussion with with the rest of the Yamajo defenders. I think the Yamajo defense is, is playing perfectly. Uh, Terrence Dobson just needs to sort of take this time. It's the half. Relax. They have the ball. They're down five, but if they score on this drive, they go up by one. I think he just needs to slow down, be patient, and like I said, sort of draw th draw this game into uh, a snail's pace compared to Andrew Farrier's sort of um, foot on the pedal, all, all things go. And and to your point, uh, GM, Andrew Farrier has done a good job of dissecting the defense pre-snap, but what the Amateur Station has done well is, okay, I saw what you saw there, now we'll take that look away. I want to ask you, GM, switching sides, obviously, the Mass City uh, offense, they've come into the playoffs averaging 31 points a game. They, they only have 12. Obviously, in the championship game, defenses are, are, are more liable to, to tighten up a little bit. But again, we've seen a number of huge drops. We've seen even a couple of misreads mm -hmm. by, by, by the rookie hotshot quarterback and Andrew Ferrier. What does Moss City need to do to put a couple more points on the board in the second half? I, th I think at this point where Moss City have relied a lot on Bruno Provence and Benjamin Dettilli, who were who both amounted for 11 touchdowns in the regular season, I think at this point Ferrier needs to spread the ball a little bit more, um, play outside his comfort zone, feed the ball to the players who aren't uh, as prolific on this offense, who have still been contributing but don't have the numbers of those two, to sort of force the defense to make decisions that don't involve covering the number one and number two receivers. Also, let's have some more scoring in the second half because I'm falling asleep. <laughs> defense is not my thing. You guys know that. <laughs> yeah, so all these adjustments are not good. According to you, defense is not a thing at all. No, it's not, it's not relevant. It's just something that keeps the ball out of my hand for long enough to me to get annoyed. One of, one of the few players in the league who has a defensive rating lower than the base 55 rating. Yeah, this guy. This guy right here. This guy right here. <laughs> so, again, guys, I just want to remind you there's a 12-7 to 7 lead at halftime. Yeah, remind me, please. <laughs> remind me of how much scoring there is in this game. Yeah, but this is it. I mean, it, it, it's, it's playoff football. Don't you think it's playoff football? As I said a few minutes ago, defenses have uh, usually, what they do is they, they, they tighten up defensively. Obviously, in a championship game, I mean, this, this is for all the marbles. So, I know a lot of people are expecting a high scoring game, but this is, I don't think this is too, uh, this is not, this is not unfamiliar territory. Do you see this game being won on the last possession, or will one team sort of break away in the second half? The way it looks at the moment is that um, the Moss City offense will start to make mistakes and the game will get away from them so uh with that in mind considering that uh game changers were a like uh the core this core was part of the winter 2014 game changers champions uh we have valentin skripnik with the greendale human beings championship compared to no player on moss city who has even been in the finals before let alone what uh, won a touchdown is is that sort of exploiting their greenness in this situation and they're new they're new to the, the to the uh to the league right so they might not have they might not know Everything that's entailed in the roadshow. The and they've, the lights, they've the since been untested in, in a high-pressure situation like this. Yeah, it's true. Dawson gets the first snap of the second half, tosses it over to Joseph. Joseph trying to cut across the field, makes a move, he does. Finally picks up about well, 10 yards. I don't think it's even that much. Uh, I feel like they're going to spot him just, just shy of that. Looks like it. Oh, no. Uh, no. John Williams is signifying that first down after placing the, the bag back down. Oh, no. Okay. No, you're right. Second <laughs> and one. Okay. You, got, you, got about, you got about nine, nine and a half I, right I saw his arm outstretched play, yeah. in that. Uh, the arm of Jonathan Williams is so beefy, it's hard to tell exactly where it is. <laughs> so second is short right now for Yamajo. Dobson gets a stop. A high one. He's able to corral it. Tries to spin off the rush, but Pavanche. Provence gets a sack. It's Very interesting, yeah. Um, having Bruno Provence put into rush, and we're, we're seeing dividends pay off right away now. And... Terrence Dobson not looking good right now, um, limping a little bit, holding his knee. Uh, and, and this may be a bad sign. And Dobson had Jack and Taki um, on the uh, on the sideline by himself. He just, but he was staring down the rush. So it looks like the speed of Bruno Provence uh, really, really uh, upsetting the rhythm of Terrence Dobson. And and we hope, he's, we hope his, his health is not affected. From either. second and one, we go to third and six, which is not a good sign. Another high snap and Dobson manages to Dobson. catch it. Throwing over the middle, incomplete. 
Man, it's lucky that Dobson's such a great receiver because he's having to, to, to show off the, those skills at the quarterback position yeah. with some rough snaps from Valton Scripton. That, that snap definitely um, had a chance to go for a safety right there. Yeah, Yamajo will punt that there, and, and that drive could have gone a lot worse than it ended up being. Um, Yamajo sort of luck out with a, a punt to put Moss City on their own 10. However, they are still trailing at this point. Now, now, now so it's interesting what they did, as you guys mentioned a few seconds ago, moving the Tilly from snapper, putting Provence. Jeremy Lavallee now, who was playing the left cornerback, has gone over to the right, and they put Antoine Hamasaki Belanger at the left corner. Van Vanny seems to be the target in all hooks, so Andrew Ferrier is seeing something there. That's something that we've talked about early. They've adjusted on DVD Joseph's side. They have not yet made an adjustment uh, on, uh, on Tacky's side. Yeah, Benoit Vanny, um 13 receptions, one touchdown in the regular season. May see his role um, increase and a little bit more weight on his shoulders with, with this game right now. So second There's that hook two. again on the left. No, it's the hook and go. Once again to Bavanche. He's not able to make the catch. Running stride for stride with DVD Joseph. So good coverage on, on the player right there by Joseph. But what we talked about is, is, is we see DVD Joseph start to crash on the hook. And Drew Farrier sees it because he's got great vision as quarterback. And waits for the right opportunity, keeps running that hook a couple times, letting that bait come in more each time, takes a chance on the hook and go. Great defense though by DVD Joseph to, to run with him stride for stride, as you said, Brett. Communication here, um, different Yamajo defenders lining up in different spots. This may be man here in the trips formation. Looks like it is. Nope. It's to the wide open. Oh, oh great Anton read. Sackage. Oh, yeah. Nice play by Sackage. He jumped that hook route by Provence on the outside. Yeah, Anton Zaki is really making a great play, uh, undercutting that route, uh, really smart. And you could tell that's a quarterback making that read because he, he read the route concept and, and jumped right underneath. Yes, Fourth and two here. Um, this is a very, very interesting play here right now. Um, everyone in Moss City sort of discussing what needs to be done. Andrew Farrier uh, leading the troops right now. Trips again, trips right. You think they go deep now, GM, or do they go for the quick strike to pick up the first down? Well, they go deep. That's the answer, GM. Benjamin Attili this time stays in bounds. Finally, after about four to five tries <laughs> going deep, they finally hit it. Attili with a huge catch over his defender, DVD Joseph. I know what they say. If at first you don't succeed, maybe try staying in bounds next time. Yeah, and honestly, I think that he took everyone on Yamajo's defense for loop there in throwing that deep ball for a touchdown where mm -hmm. it was such a, a short yardage for first down. That's a very high risk, high reward. It wasn't his first read though, because he looked he looked at two other receivers, sure. went short routes and a hook and on a slant. They were both covered. Then he sees the Tilly break open, and yeah, it's it's uh, high risk. No, not when he's wide open though. The left corner, the Great Tilly. Ball. Pardon me, it was not the Tilly. That was number five, Victor. Rufio Ratty with the catch. It's so just the, the hair. The hair's throwing you off. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The one-point conversion now gives Moss City a 19-7 to seven lead. So now, Pease, what does Yamajo have to do to get back in this game? Uh, the snapper needs to stop thinking about his route. Valentin Skripnik just needs to get the ball into the chest of his quarterback because the bad snaps are paralyzing. L look, at, look at how far off the, the Moss City DBs are playing right now. Terrence Dobson just needs to sort of cut up. Um, Jack Antaki on a hooker and out will be wide open right there as he is. Uh, DVD yeah. Joseph seemingly, uh, seemingly open as well, but unable to corral the ball and make that catch. And that's it. Like if they can continue to march, those, again, if they, the, the slants will be open, hooks will be open on the outside, just because of how deep the Moss City defenders are. That said, they're very athletic and like to undercut routes. So we'll see. Uh, if, if this is a, a baiting mechanic or if they're just trying to force Yamajo to march up the station hoping that Terrence Dobson will make a mistake. March up the station, I like that. March up the station was a complete mistake on my part. But thank you for pointing that out, GM. I appreciate that. DVD Joseph. Now, uh, jerk. With the crossing route, Dan Tacky way behind him and incomplete on second down was Dobson. DVD Joseph along those sidelines there had early separation with his man that was quickly taken away. But um, the Yamajo receivers going back to the huddle, Terrence Dobson getting uh, increasingly frustrated right now. And, and like you said, GM, that what's happening is the defenders are sort of uh, switching spots. So, so there is a little bit of separation. If instead of like a fly, he runs it at a 10-yard hook, he might be able to, to, to maintain separation long enough for Dobson to get the ball. So huge third down for Yamajo, deep in her own territory. Dobson looks to his left. He checks it down to Sackage. Sackage tries to make a spin move, but he is tackled by number two, Youssef Kassed. 
So okay. big stop by the rookie. Yeah, at this point, it's uh, it's fourth down, probably about three, four yards to go here. I think Yamajo have to go for it at this oh, yeah. point. Uh, they they need to convert this first down, if not score. To as the the clock winds down here, we're about now, 15 minutes remaining in this game. Now, Pete's gonna ask you if you're the quarterback of mm -hmm. Yamajo, what player are you calling right here? I'm uh, throwing an interception because it's me. But honestly, just some rub routes. One one guy running deep just in case, but try and get some uh, separation uh, using uh, other receivers on the field. And that ball is tipped incomplete by Jeremy Lavallee. Anton Sackius is open early in that route, but Terrence Thompson saw it late and tried to force it anyway. Yeah, so but I didn't like I didn't like he called an, just an isolation concept where guys were just running uh, routes by themselves. No, the opposite of what I said, running a team concept where you have a receiver rubbing off someone else. Instead, we uh, we see the ball get thrown dangerously into coverage. I don't know if it was a case of sort of leading Sackis and then throwing the ball that left DVD Joseph open for that first down on mm -hmm. the, the right sidelines, but that was just very, very open, and it's a shame he didn't see that earlier. So a huge turnover on downs, forced by Moss, sitting that first pass right there to Vanny on the sideline, tipped away by the aforementioned Anton Sackis. Yeah, just uh, just a step behind there. Potentially, had he ta uh, picked that off, he would have had a lot of green uh, green to work with there. Maybe not a pick six, but definitely potentially giving Yamajo great field position. But it's now second down and ten. It's a couple times they undercut the route. They're just not able to hold on to it. Uh, easier said than done, of course, against a good quarterback and Andrew Farrier. So second down, big rush coming up by Thomas Anderson. Passivani on the sideline, not able to escape the grasp of Jack Antaki. And look, for all that we've said positive about Jack Antaki, he's not adjusted his stance at all, and it's allowing for the easy hook to Benoit Vanier all game long. Well, what it looks like right now is that both teams seem to be uh, afraid of that deep ball and playing that uh, the two three the two three with the, the the corners dropping along with the middle safety. But at at this point, it's been working out much better for uh, Moss City currently. Toss over the middle, and that's caught. Is he had a bounce? Yes, he uh. is. I did not think he would be able to get separation on Anton Sackes on that. I didn't even think he'd be able to come down with the ball either. Yeah. Like he, that was a great play, just just a little too far, and the ball thrown slightly late by Andrew Ferrier. So we got a very important fourth down here. Fourth down and three, it looks like. Um, Yamajo need to come up with this this stop. And this is not a spot that that Farrier's handled particularly well in the game either. The third and fourth and short. Uh, we ex we've seen him be more efficient in past games. Crossing routes again. That post was wide open. That post wide open. You see the Tilly furious in the end zone, jumping up and down. He was wide open. So now a big stop by Amajo. A turnover on downs. So how key is going to be now GM for Yamajo to get some points on the board. Again, they're down 19 to seven, just over 12 minutes remaining in this one. Look, when you say how key it is, it, it has to be done. Either Yamajo start putting points on the board or they're, they're gonna lose. Um, very interesting that we've seen three turnover on downs now for Farrier, who has been protective of the ball and not mm -hmm. thrown an interception, but is still not completing those first downs. Jack Antaki and Skripnik crossing. Oh, poorly thrown pass, but Antaki comes out with the ball, is able to make the, the catch for seven yards. Quick tackle there as well. And for you guys at home, you know, there's no fumbles in FPF, so that fumble by Antaki, the ball is dead at the spot of the fumble. In an alternate world where people at home are watching this and don't know anything about flag post football. <laughs> <laughs> Could happen. Could happen. I, I think the... Mom thinks you're watching. Yeah, my mom too, so <laughs> relatives are appreciative of this. So second and one... Ray here for Yamajo. Dobson back once again. He gets a snap. A good one by Skripnik. Dobson's going to run. Picks up a first down. It is enough for that first down. Uh, ben Dettilli with the tackle there. Anton Sack is running an, uh, an sort of in from the, the right slot. And Terrence just saw that there was enough space for him to sort of thread that needle and run for the first down. And a way for... It was great to see that Dobson saw the overcommitment from Skripnik pumped and then took off the opposite way, although Terrence Dobson definitely slowed up in this game. There was a bit of contact earlier. He does not look himself. Waiting for the snap here on this first down. Right open over the middle. Sackage not able to come down with the ball. Knocked away by Kassid once again. Second back down of the game. So very interesting there because... Um, 
Terrence Dobson was a little bit more aware. He didn't re he didn't broadcast that he was throwing to, to Anton Sackis on the post, but even then the Moss City defenders were able to crash because he didn't have that sort of confidence to thread the needle. It was just sort of an approximation. Well, and on crossing routes, you, you can't just assume there's nobody on the other side of the field. You have to be able to read the backside as well. See, like right there, he's he's not looking... Terrence Dobson is not looking on the backside to see if there's another defender crashing, and he's thrown some dangerous passes. Not only is he missing the backside defender, he's also missing the hooks to the wide open on the sideline on the right-hand side. Let's be honest, guys, and all our experience put together in FPF, this is a game of matchups. Yep. And we see right now Yamajo, especially their quarterback in particular, Terrence Dobson, is not taking advantage of the matchups that he has offensively. Yeah, this is not a case of your strongest versus their strongest. It's a case of your weakest who's slightly better than potentially their weakest and sort of exploiting that in these finals. Once again, Dobson with an incomplete pass. He had a receiver wide open on the sideline. That's Alvy Mizell who's staring at his quarterback as he makes his way back to the huddle. And uh, that was third down. DVD Joseph had 15 yards of cushion. Just run a hook, get the six yards, and then worry about fourth down. Instead, now it's fourth and ten. Obviously, Yamajo going for it now with 9.20 remaining in this game. A 19-7 lead from Moss City here live at the Bell Sport Sports Complex in Brassard, Quebec. So fourth and ten right now facing Yamajo. Dobson gets a snap. He goes over to the right-hand side, out of bounds. And now that's a play piece that we were looking for a little earlier. You put in the much bigger uh, Damon Thomas Anderson on, on a much smaller Hamasaki Belanger, but a bad pass right there by Dobson and turnover on downs for Yamajo. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a mismatch for sure, but you need to make the ball catchable. He, he had no chance to make that play. Um, on a side note, I would like to buy a barbecue that was made by Hamasaki Belanger. Oh, that sounds great. It sounds like a great grill. Yeah. Um, I, I think at this point, if you're Andrew Farrier, do you go for that, that deep bomb to sort of be the, the touchdown that's the backbreaker? And oh. Absolutely. If you can win the game here, you have to take it. And there it is. Over the middle to Provence. It's it's not able to come down Unable to, to corral it. Yeah. Uh, Damon Thomas Anderson either leaving just on the snap or, or, or right slightly right. I was slightly about to early. say on fourth down in the previous drive, yeah. it really looked like he's been leaving early and he's getting away with it. But the uh, on that play there, GM had had uh, Ferrier let him across, let his receiver across the field instead of up the field. It would have been an easier throw, and there was nobody on the backside there. Ferrier, having only given up four sacks uh, all season right now, has has looked just great and has rendered many rushers just ineffective, including uh, Damon Thomas Anderson, who's had such great games before. And, here's and there he run. goes for a run. Ferrier, he's still up. Oh, he finally, he's brought down by Anton Sackage. But not before a gain, I believe it was about nine yards. Yeah, he's going to be just shy of that first down, but it's it's great effort right now. So that's the second carry of the postseason for Ferrier. Pick up a nine. He had his previous long was one carry for seven yards in this postseason. Yeah, I like how we assumed it was the anglicized version of Ferrier. Ferrier? When I, when I tried, Brett, I saw that. I saw what you're doing there. We're safe. <laughs> I'm still saying Farrier. Anton yeah, Sack is writing, uh, walking right up to the, the line of scrimmage where Moss City were currently convened, just sort of uh, trying to get that competitive edge. Looks like they may be going into 4-1 uh, here. And there it was. Once again, Detroit yeah. wide open, touchdown. But it's 4-1, two guys can't stay short. Yeah, exactly. So Alvi Mazel um, properly followed the post from the, the most inside uh, slot receiver. And that just left that, that fly yeah. wide open. DVD and, and that's Joseph how has to be smart enough to say, i got to leave the hook for, for my short, uh, short defender, and he's got to take off and help deep. So it's not a 25-7 to 7 lead for Ma City. This game looking like a blowout. As Ma City attempts to extend their lead with a one-point conversion coming up right here. Yeah, I'm just happy someone's scoring. One-point convert here. Trips Ferrier, Rose, right again. Right. Close across his body. Detilly coming up with the conversion as well. So after we saw, we saw numerous drops by Detilly throughout this game, two huge catches right there for the rookie. Yeah, and he's, he's been having, you know what, he, he had a rough start, but the this, this second half has been all his. Uh, great great adjustment by Benjamin Dettilly. Way to stay in the game despite having su such uh, trouble early on in the game. Yeah, um, Moss City now have a three possession lead and it's going to be very, very difficult to, uh, for Yamajo to come back from that. But we have seen Stranger Things happen. No, we have not. We've <laughs> only seen str Stranger Things on Netflix and it was awesome. So 5.48 remaining in the second half. Skripnik. That was not. Missed the ball and looked like it was picked off. 
And it was. And that Yusef Kassid. So a blowout it looks opportunity. Like, and it looks like Terrence Dobson right there is, is throw, uh, signaling a, a flag asking for a challenge here. Will we so have we, a challenge? We may indeed have a challenge. Our first of, of the night so far. Yay. So just a reminder, each team has a challenge. That being said, that was a very, very poorly thrown pass. Yeah, that, that does not look like it was a... We, we may need to slow that down here, but that looks like it may have just escaped his hands uh, or at least touched the ground before being corralled in. We're all watching it slowly. The ball is not the, falling into this guy. The question is, does he have possession before it gets knocked out by the ground? So it looks like he has two hands on it right there, Kassid. It looks like he has two floor. hands on either side of it, but if the ball touches the ground before he's got and possession. It looks like, yeah, it looks like he might have, yeah, kind of slipped out of his left hand as he's making the rollover. Do we have another back. angle? We will be going to that other angle shortly. For those at home, that's me asking Eagle if you can switch to another angle. I'd like to pull back the curtain and let people know how yes. Okay, here we go. Here, uh, a different spot. Uh, I don't envy our, our sideline judges right now who have to make this decision. Too, ma too many people uh, here as well to sort of uh, get a clean angle. Yeah, and it's uh, uh, the, the in-booth referee for this game is Steve Hothod. He's agonizing over the footage, trying to decide uh, from the replay uh, if this is going to be ruled an interception or an incomplete pass. So you guys at home, you see right there, the ball is, looks like is in the arms, or the left hand, pardon me, of Cassidy. He's rolling over, and now it looks like the ball might have scraped the ground as his body was moving forward before he attempted to roll onto his back. This is another look here. Do we have a cleaner shot from potentially um, Lance's camera? No, we have uh, some temporary Incom difficulties. Okay, so we are having temporary difficulties on that, which... Uh, head referee Leo Gervais just called it an incomplete pass, so Yamajo gets another life right here. That's one of those where where it's it's a tough judgment call, but it's even though the, the, the footage itself might not have shown you, it's sort of like a common sense call. Yes. Where it's pretty obvious that the arms were on the outside of the ball and the ball had to make contact with yeah, the ground. Yeah, so um, it, it's just almost, at, at that point, the likelihood and, and physics of the ball knocking out uh, before having completion. Oh, we have a wheel on the We're on the left. Now. Dobson gets out the rush, throws it deep to the right to Sakis. Sakis looks like he might have got interfered with for a little bit. A well, little bit. By Vanier. He also, no put, he also pushed. He also pushed off at the five yard line to gain separation. So it was hand fighting the whole way. Oh, pardon me, by Lavely, not Vanier. So second down one is incomplete. And this is the Joe. this is your whole point about matchups, GM. You see Anton Sack is matched up against one of the only tall defenders on Moss City. And then the shortest player on Yamajo against the, the, the tallest defender on Moss City. Uh, so you have to have mismatches anywhere else, but he's not taking it. Rather than working on their strengths, I think that um, Terrence Dobson needs to find, uh, find the weaknesses, like I said, and just sort of dump it. It's just an, that, that pass was just underthrown as well. He's, he's frustrated. He's making these, these mistakes that he shouldn't be making at this point. Um, this, this game is getting out of hand for him, I think. Mm -hmm. It's a lack of confidence at this point. He's just leaking. It's a lack of confidence, and, and it looks like, guys, that his mechanics also appear to be a bit off, throwing off of his back foot right there, not, not being able to hit Ricky Dudane, who was wide open on the crossing route over the middle. Uh, and that may be uh, sort of difficulty in planting. We saw him holding his right knee before. Mm -hmm. He may have uh, just, with that injury, be unable to plant and complete those passes properly. Yeah, he definitely looks a lot slower both times that he rolled out. Um, he just did not look himself. And the guy, even despite his injuries, is still a devastating athlete. And a high snap once again. Oh. Corralled beautifully once again by Dobson. Tossed deep, pushed down to the ground. It's Thomas Anderson and a flag on the play called by linesman Jonathan Williams. That will be a spot foul as well. It looks like uh, they are calling pass interference yeah. on that. So it will be uh, first down and goal for Yamajo. Currently down right now by three scores definitely a bit of baiting by the receiver there but still he, there was some contact and and he did cut off the route at the very least so by the book that's still a pass interference so thomas anderson thrown to the ground by hamasaki belanger that's where i think it's baiting because like that dude 
in the street would never be able to throw the other oh, guy Oh, absolutely. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, why would it be able to happen on the football field? Red zone here as well. Speaking of the matchups that you guys were talking about, Dudonay and Thomas Anderson both on the same side. Yeah, look at the size difference here. Ricky Dudonay can just run a fade, hand up and everything. That's the one. Touchdown. There we go. Well, better late than never. Touchdown, Damon Thomas Anderson. At this point, do you decline the convert and uh, sort of keep going to see if you can uh, get those essential stops right now with only two minutes yeah, left? Yeah, um, yeah. Okay, they're going oh, for two. Yeah, uh, that's a bizarre Terrence, decision. Terrence Dobson is calling it quickly, at least, though. So yeah. at least this this uh, w w ball will be snapped very, very quickly. Now, please let me ask you, do you go back to that same play once again if you're the quarterback? No. Yeah, it's, it's too high risk. And he kind of goes back to the same receiver over the middle, though. Pardon me. No, that was Dudonay Dude at the time. And down on the floor. If you have Dudonay and, yeah, Sifax uh, Cassette, who is not looking good right now, facing his hands. Um, Looks like time is now stopped in, in the interim as well. Yeah, I, I don't think uh, the, anything intentional there. Just uh, that dude is the size of several Ricky Dudonay's meals. Like he just, he's just a small dude com by comparison, you know? Yeah. We all hope Sifax the uh, Cassette feeling better. He's getting up on his own volition. The crowd reacting, clapping. Good to see him getting up. Yeah, absolutely. Ha happy to see that. And uh, without risk to injury, they're going to replace him because the game is somewhat out of hand mm -hmm. uh, so that they're, they're going to go ahead with uh, without him on offense. Moss City with a 13 point lead right now and the ball just under two minutes left to five plays in this game. So Moss City now taking the time in a huddle smartly letting the clock wind down. Trips right. Remaining. Bat it down. Oh, oh wow. my god. Oh my god. Maybe it's game. not over. Play of the game right there by Damon Thomas Anderson. With the rare bat down and pick coming from the rusher position. Andrew Ferrier get able to tackle him just short, not giving up a, a pick six in addition to that interception or uh, pass deflected for an interception. This is this is huge. Yamajo though need to score and and come up with a turnover once again because it's it's still not in Yamajo's hands. They still trail and need to I, I noticed the clock's not moving. I guess there was a timeout taken. Yeah, it was a timeout taken Smartest by possible time to take out a Although take a they could have called the challenge because they still had a challenge left. And then and then they would have been left with two timeouts. Because during the challenge time, they could have called a play and, and snapped it with at least one time but wasted. But if you're my city, obviously right here, you don't want to call a time. No, but I'm saying Yamajo Station could have, because they won the last challenge. They have another challenge. They could have called a challenge and then they still would have had two timeouts. So I think in this instance here, um, either on a double move or just sort of uh, a quick dump off, I want to see Valentin Skripnik, just uh, Terrence Dobson looking for him and threading that needle. Another much taller Provence is back at corner going against Thomas Anderson. Dump there that is. There it is. Touchdown. Yeah, they need to decline this uh, convert. So 26-19 lead, one possession game right now for Moss City. Looks like and they're, they're going to try and convert. narrow that window. I mean, look, they got to make a convert at some point, so I guess... You have two attempts instead of one, but just, you're losing valuable time at this point. Crossing oh, there road. that is. Thomas Anderson, he gets it. The one point combo And Yamajo have now called their last time out as well. The clock is stopped. Um, so very, very interesting here so right now. We're in a six point game. A smart display of time management right there by Yamajo. So Yamajo Station. Yeah, pardon me, Yamajo Station, with a 20, uh, pardon me, down 26 to 20 with 58 seconds remaining. 58.3 seconds. Oh, 58.3 seconds remaining to five plays in the contest. Well, that said, the, the home audience sees 55 seconds. So uh, I believe I believe that what we see, what we see, not with the, the, the home audience sees, is the exact time, but I don't think it makes that much of a difference. Look, at, at this point, <laughs> Moss City, all they need is a first down, but... Um, Andrew Ferrier just needs to not get it oh, too quickly. Oh, Ferrier burns Thomas Anderson on the rush. And he's still going. Huge pickup. He burnt two other guys. And he's, he's still, still going. going. Touchdown. Oh, wow. That's ridiculous. And, I, and I, I recast my vote for play of the game. Oh. I got Thomas <laughs> Anderson INT. It is the run for yeah, 40 yards I, by I a touchdown think, by Ferrier. Yeah, Andrew Ferrier at this point has to get finals MVP just for that. That was the absolute turning game. Jack Antaki um, slow He's to get up on the sidelines. Side Ricky Dudonay went down on the sideline in a heap. He parted the Red Sea, basically. Yeah, so what are we going to talk about for the next 25 seconds? This uh, is the clock is winding down right now. Uh, 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 yeah, we'll have five plays um, to work with. We just saw the replay there, yeah. 
Yeah, huge run. Ferrier bre breaking out of a number of would-be tackles on that 40-yard TD run. So great play by the rookie to extend his team, team's lead to 12 points. We're now in five plays. After the convert. Yes. Wide open to Tilly. A part of me, that was a... Uh, you did it ratty. again. <laughs> it, 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 it's the bouncing hair. It's the bouncing hair, absolutely. <laughs> it's so flowing. I gotta, gotta get the secrets after the game. So 33-20 lead right At here. At this point, it looks like Yamajo are, are discussing potentially calling it. Yep, that yeah, is the game. Have. Yeah. Your Just spring uh, 2017 Div E champions, Moss City. New to the league, their first ever season FPF. So congratulations to them. It's it's fitting that they beat Yamajo, who were once game changers coming into the uh, the FPF. We we heard uh, Alvi Mazel talking about before the game. It's not the entire team, obviously, but the core of him and Anton Sakis and, and Terrence Dobson. So a new team coming in, just like Game Changers did, winning a championship. Absolutely impressive. Congratulations, Moss City. We, we talked about the fact that uh, this game could potentially go uh, right down to the last drive. It didn't quite get there, but it was close back and forth. And yeah. honestly, it, it just looks like Moss City made fewer mistakes and, and capitalized on those of, um, of Yamajo to, to seal the deal. So, so now, please, I want to ask you, for the... For Yamajo, what, what was more backbreaking for them? Was it the two turnover on downs that Moss City was able to force or that 40-yard TD at the end by Andrew Ferrier? It, there was a few things. It, it was, it, I don't think there was one defining moment for Yamajo. There was, there was some sloppy snaps. There was Terrence Dobson getting sacked. There was uh, you know, the, the inability to convert on four downs. And then there was Andrew Ferrier just crushing all their hopes after a huge, huge shift in momentum. After, after you know, David Thomas Anderson makes a great play uh, to, to bat on the ball and get the pick, he then gets burned by, to, to end the game, essentially, uh, by Andrew Ferrier. So just a combination of things that just didn't go right. It's amazing that they kept the game as close as they did with, with the, the wheels falling off for, for large parts of the game. Now, Jim, switching over to you for, for my city. I mean, they had the, most of the, uh, the majority of the momentum all game long. They, came, they got up to a huge lead in the second half with a lot of uh, a lot of really good execution offensively. But you see, their, back were, their backs were against the wall Af after that play by Anderson, which led to, to the touchdown to play later by Thomas Anderson. How, how key is it? And, and, and for, for, for a person like yourself who's won multiple championships mm -hmm. in this league, how key was it for my city to be able to, to just forget about what happened? Their, their league got, got shut down basically to six points. They were up 26 to 20. How key was it for them to be able just to turn the page on that so quickly and come up with a big play on their own to seal the game? Resiliency is absolutely key. We were talking about at the half as well that Terrence Dobson needed to go into the second half with a sort of fresh mindset, um, letting go of what had happened previously uh, in, in a similar situation to Andrew Farrier with that interception, letting go of what happened previously and just taking the game into his, old, in, into his own hands. Um, with that, like you see maybe a more seasoned quarterback, not necessarily in this league, but in general, as Andrew Farrier, who, who showed his expertise compared to Terrence Dobson, who is a receiver converted into quarterback. Mm -hmm. Now, Jim, I want to ask you, obviously switching sides to, to Yamajo, we saw Terrence Dobson today, he struggled a lot. A lot of missed throws, a lot of blown opportunities, a battered interception as well. You played against him, obviously with the homo sapiens, you sacked him twice, so you got to play pretty much one-on-one -on -one against him. Yep. How, how shocked are you, are you to see the performance of him this afternoon? Um, I, I think that the the pressure of, of being in the finals can take anyone for a loop um i don't think it, terrence didn't give up that many sacks but the two that he gave up were were difficult ones that were almost turning points for those drives specifically um at, at this point right now like having one short defender devin hintermuller who was absent from this game was a great defender a great defender that, yeah. changed yamajo's defense w as well and as we saw both early on and then just sort of incrementally as as the game progressed andrew farrier like, right at the beginning was able to identify the weaknesses yamajo adjusted but he was still able to sort of figure it out after a little while maybe a little bit slower but with enough time to, to sort of seal the deal um, and Hintermuller may have been a, a difference maker in this, but credit to Moss City, who played exceptionally on both offense and defense. And Andrew Ferrier winning the player of the game, as we predicted, yeah. and we saw that the trophy uh, handed out to um, Moss City. We saw them getting their T-shirts, and we saw, of course, the award getting going to Andrew Ferrier. Guys, I, I don't think it could have gone to a better player in this game, especially given that he single-handedly, single-footedly yep. iced the game on the last play of the game. That is absolutely the turning point of this game, and he... He is definitely, it, it's merited. Oh, I thought you were going to say that single-footedly is absolutely a real word. 
Okay. <laughs> so obviously it going can be. Going it is now. now. <laughs> going forward from Moss City, obviously they're, they're, they're the D Division E champs. They had a chance to talk to Ferrier before the game. He mentioned he would not be returning for the winter season. He plays hockey uh, north uh, south of the border, pardon me. But he will be back, he said, in the spring. He's got to get his priorities so, straight. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> seriously. So uh, he's actually playing hockey at a uh, 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 prep school in uh, Connecticut. So obviously it'll be interesting to see where Moss City goes if they decide to come back in the winter season. If they do, who will be throwing the ball for them? But I want to ask you, Pete, we made a lot out of uh, this week, even on the podcast, championship experience. We have four guys on Moss City's side who have come in, Terrence Dawson being one of them, who has championship experience with none compared to Moss City. But we saw Moss City, with the exception of that little life of breath that Yamato got at the end, they pretty much dominated this game. Yep. So obviously it goes to show you that maybe experience isn't always necessary. Well, and I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. Moss City now has championship experience. So, I mean, yep. there we go. It means nothing because in the end it's – it's about matchups, and then one team was exploiting them, and the other team wasn't, and then that's what we saw today. So again, guys, live from the Bell Sports Complex here in Brassard, Quebec. Moss City is your Division E champions with a 33 to 20 win over Yamagel for GM and P's. I'm Brent. Thank you guys for tuning in. We'll be back in the winter to do it all over again.